My name is Elizabeth McManus Cullen. I was born in Providence in 1960. Um, and my father was born in Newport in 1919. And his father was born in Newport in 1886. And his, my great-grandparents came over from Roscommon in, I want to say, 1884-ish. I know they came to Boston, and I actually did go with my aunt to the archives in Boston and saw the ship's log when I was in my 20s and paid very little attention, so I lost all that information. Question. But they, they were North End Irish. I know that there was always um, a discrepancy between the Fifth Ward South End Irish who came first, and then the North End Irish who came a little bit later. They were landowners, mostly. I know my family had a house in Roscommon, and um, just for a better life, I think. But they were more middle class yeah. when they came. So, uh, they lived on, the great-grandparents lived on Newport Avenue, right on Broadway, almost right on the corner. One mm -hmm. couple houses in on the right has a turret. Um, um, in fact, I met Florence Gray, the Florence Gray Center. It, um, uh, back in 98, um, we went to see Bill Clinton when he came to Fort Adams. Um, and. My dad was still living, and we had VIP tickets. A friend of ours who was a state rep gave them to us, and we were sitting in a nice area, and as we were, my father had had a stroke, but was still in pretty good shape, we were walking slowly back to the car, and a woman, a senior citizen, African-American, um, came up to him, and he lived, I was brought up in North Kingstown, so that's another part of the story, but she said, you don't remember me, but we went to high school together. My father graduated from Rogers in 39, and, uh, it was Florence Gray, and I knew the Florence Gray Center, but I'd never met her. And they started talking about old times, and she said, my parents admired your uncle, Mickey, so much that they named my brother after him. Oh, wow. That's nice. <laughs> so the Irish and the black of the North End, because it was Cary Hill and then the, the black section of West Broadway. So there were friends there, and there was, I, th I would have to say, of course, this is all conjecture because obviously I wasn't there, but I think the racial relationships were much better then than they are today. Um, so my grandfather's born in this house that I believe was Dr. Storrs um, on Washington Street on the corner, which is now where the causeway is. It's a, it's a Quaker schoolhouse. A friend of mine owns it now, but I think that was the building. I looked at his birth certificate. I don't have the exact date. Anyway, um, he became a plumber and uh, worked in town, had his own business, worked at the torpedo station during World War I, um, was one of the five founders of People's Credit Union out of the torpedo station, um, and then had his own private business. He owned property on uh, uh, Pond Avenue and, um, I, is that Warner, Warner Street, and um, worked for the city as he got older as the plumbing inspector until he was 84. Story. That, that's a whole. That's a whole thing. Charles uh, was 26 when he got married. He was, and I have some photographs of him. You can look at later. Very handsome Irishman. Um, my grandmother was a Yankee from Cape Cod. Last name Fish. Very much a Congregationalist. Very much from the Mayflower. Literally, um, great, great, great. Eight, eight or nine generations back, maybe ten, was um, Fuller. Edward Fuller, who came on the Mayflower. So her whole family lived in Barnesville County for 300 years. Um, but her so my grandmother came to visit her sister and met him at a, at a dance. Nice. And that was in, like, 1912. And um, let's see, Charles and then uh, George, my Uncle George, was quite a, quite a prominent man in town. Um, he lived to be in his 80s and died, I think, in 1998. He's, he was educated, they all went to Rogers, um, but Uncle George went on to Belmont Abbey, which was the place in North Carolina where the great uncle had been buried. So he had a, a prep school education there and came home and went to Bryant. And this was all pre-World War II, so um, they were all, they had gone, the older brother, Charles Jr., went to the Merchant Marine Academy. So when World War II came, they all were officers. And, uh, my so that time between leaving Northwestern and going and enlisting into the Navy, this is a fun Newport story, he became the first ice cream maker for Newport Creamery. Yeah. That's a great story. They sent him off to UMass Dartmouth to get a, a um, you know, dairy clinician. I have a picture of him somewhere with his class with all their white lab coats on. And I actually met the man who was the Newport Creamery historian years ago, and he had... Um, all of the ledgers from the, the hours, the you know, how many people, and there was my father's name. And the first week, I think he worked 78 hours or something. Where, where was that? Is it in One Mile Corner, the same oh, place. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Elliot Place. Oh, cool. I worked at the Clark Cook House. And um, 
my aunt Jane, who was the city clerk at the time, took me around to get a job. She took me to the library, so she checked that box for my mother. And then she took me over to the cookhouse, and I sat with Jeff Sullivan, who's still there, and he said, do you have any experience? And I said, no. He said, well, you yeah you'll be fine at behind the cash register. So I did that for the first summer, then I was a hostess, and then David, the owner, thought, well, this girl should be out front, so I was the hostess manager. And when I graduated from URI, he gave me a job as the manager of the candy store, and um, I worked for David for 10 years. I worked at Lock Ober in Boston, doing the, he had a very exclusive restaurant in Boston. Oh, yeah. And I did the parties for all of the Kennedys and you know all the private events for both mm. the cookhouse and knock over for a long time.